Welcome to the Weird Works Podcast. I'm Dr. Christy, your host. Join us for conversations about alternative and sometimes controversial healthcare topics. This podcast will provide the evidence that you need in order to make informed decisions about your health, to empower you with the facts that you need to advocate for your health, and to encourage you that there is hope your body heals. Join us from experts from all things weird, as well as the testimonies of people with stories of radical healing who were once told that perhaps their condition was a death sentence, that they would just need to live with it, or that drugs and invasive surgery were the only answer. Let's get into agreement that if there is something natural and non-invasive that could be helpful, that it could be your first option rather than your last resort. Welcome to our Friendsgiving holiday meal prep. So we do this. I love this because it's actually perfect for our 90-10 lifestyle. If you haven't been part of the 90-10 or logged in yet, I highly encourage you to, especially around the holiday season, because this is what we were talking about, 90-10. And so 90-10 is if you stay on program 90% of the time, the 10% is literally built in for this time of year when it's holidays travel outside of your control you're not con- you're not in control of the menu or don't have you have all the autonomy to make all of the decisions about what's on your table and so what's cool is that if it was already part of the plan that the holidays the vacations the travel etc were going to happen it's not a setback and that's super important it's a building for success that you don't have to start over. It doesn't squash you psychologically to feel like, oh my gosh, I totally ruined my plan. Because what happens is then people are like, oh, I did that yesterday, so what does tomorrow matter? And then it snowballs and people just really backpedal. So that was totally what 9010, the meaning was for, that the holiday Thanksgiving was already planned for, so it's gonna happen, and then you can just move back on to the 90% after the fact. So tonight what we're going to talk about is um, we always cover some statistics just to kind of let you know why this topic is so important. And then we're going to give you some tips for success. We'll discuss some healthy swaps, which is our, I think that and the recipes are people's favorite. Uh, We're going to go over uncomfortable conversations because we recognize that people sometimes are not super comfortable telling people that they have food needs or that they can't participate in dessert or that they need gluten-free, for example. So we're going to talk about how to handle those conversations and set you up for success that you don't have to be the big weirdo at the table. Uh, We're going to talk about carbs. I didn't say sugar, but sugars are carbs. So we're going to talk about where all those carbs start to stockpile and come from. And then I'm going to tell you, point you in the direction of some good recipes. And these are Tried and true on my very own friends and family. They loved them. It didn't ruin the holidays. Nobody knew that they were getting a healthier alternative. Okay, so statistics. So the average person gains five to eight pounds in the last two months of the year. So I always call this time of year the slippery slope because it came out of Halloween and there's Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's. I mean, it just keeps rolling downhill from there. And so you guys don't have to be part of that statistic. We're going to teach you how not to gain the five to eight pounds. Because then what we know, the next statistic is that 90% of all New Year's resolutions fail by February 1st. And so that's because people, you know, if they follow the first statistic, literally have made their job a whole heck of a lot harder by participating in the slippery slope time of year and gorging themselves and eating things they wouldn't normally have. And then it's like, oh my gosh, they think they're going to magically fix it with the New Year's resolution on January 1. So you guys can come back and join us in January because we're going to talk about smart goals and how to do things for lifestyle changes that are sustainable rather than a quick fix, you know, New Year's resolution, good intention gone wrong by February 1. 3,000 is the next statistic, you guys. The average number of calories in the Thanksgiving meal, and that doesn't even include going back for seconds or if you eat early in the day, like going and like, you know, foraging for leftovers. That's a a lot. That's way more than the, the number of calories. And for some people, that's double the number of calories for their entire day, just on one meal. So that's why we're talking about it. 
So how do we overcome those statistics? What do we do so we can still have an enjoyable holiday? It's super important that we, we don't feel deprived, that we don't feel like we have to be a social awkward, that we have to you know be the big old weirdo, and that we can still enjoy it and feel satisfied after the fact that we had a good holiday. So how do we do that? Well, first of all, I highly recommend, if it's not too late, um, you probably can still do this. It would have been better if you did it last month, but you can pre-order your fresh or frozen organic turkeys. Um, that way, you don't have to worry about pesticides and all that. <laughs> Growing turkeys specifically for Thanksgiving is a huge commercialized thing, and so there's a lot of money, and they're, everybody wants the biggest, fattest, most plumpest turkey, and they use growth hormones and other things to make that happen. So being such a commercialized holiday, most people never eat turkey the rest of the year unless it's like lunch meats or something. Um, there's a lot of junk in those turkeys. So you want to definitely make sure that you get organic. Um, my family, we get all of our meat, not just our turkey, but we get our meat delivered from butcher box on a monthly basis. And you can swap out what you get delivered every month. So um, I'll put this promo code in the show notes for you at the end. Um, and I'll also email it out to anybody who registered. So you'll get it in your um, inbox. But this is a promo code for 50% off uh, your first order. So I'll look for that in a little bit. And then, you know, some of these next tips for success aren't just exclusive to the holiday and to Thanksgiving time, but this is important that you maintain these meal prep tips for success, even on the week of Thanksgiving. So, you know, the Thanksgiving meal is just one meal on one day. So try to maintain normalcy the rest of the time. My husband, I always quote him, he used to be in the car industry and he talked about um, your controllables. Like a lot of things are outside of your control, but if you really zero in on the, the aspects of the Thanksgiving holiday or that week that are, are in your control, just do normalcy. So pick a day to shop and prep. In our family, it's Sundays. So you could make your meal um, for your meal prep ideas, like your menu for the whole week on Sunday. I highly recommend using a grocery delivery service. We use Instacart. And I'm going to put a promo code in your inbox as well as in the comments in a little bit for $10 off your first subscription or delivery from Instacart. It saves so much time. And most people are super slanted on time. Like when we talk with our patients, the number one thing, it's either financial or time um, or like level of difficulty for meal prepping and having things readily available and on hand. So the Instacart is awesome. And then make a plan for the whole week. And then cook one main protein to cover three meals. So for example, if you're going to make chicken for the week, you can grill chicken um, and then you can have that as a meal. You could just have chicken breast and a vegetable one night. The rest of the chicken leftover, you could chop it up and make a stir fry with. And you also could um, do little chicken cutlets and put them over your salads for your lunches. So if you're cooking, if I'm cooking, I just cook a bunch all at one time. This is so important on the holiday, like Thanksgiving week too, because I just, it's so funny. Like, I think a lot of you know, like I'm Italian. I definitely am familiar with the kitchen. We cook most of our food. My grandma and my aunts and my mom taught me how to cook. It's not a big thing. However, that Thanksgiving meal is so complicated. Like I still to this day don't feel like I could do the whole, like make the whole meal and have it all come out ready and still all be warm at the same time. It's just a lot and it's exhausting for the person who's hosting and prepping. Hopefully you're not doing it alone and people are bringing dishes to pass, but you don't wanna do a huge meal prep the week of leading up to Thanksgiving. So following some of these tips for efficiency will make the rest of the week plug and play and easy so you can focus on your holiday meal and not do that three times over during the week. And then having good um, storage containers available, we recommend glass or stainless. 
Um, Costco is a great resource for this. They have like the Pyrex gift set. I think it's under $40 and you get like 12 pieces of Pyrex. So it's all glass and they have the nice sealable snap containers so things stay fresh longer. So have those ready for leftovers. Um, Pre-chop all your veggies for the week's recipes. You can do this for the Thanksgiving meal as well. If you have a day of the week where your company hasn't landed, sometimes this is what happens in my family, right? Like, I think I'm going to work for all the way up until Wednesday, and then I'm going to have time Wednesday night and Thursday morning to prep. But what happens is I get home Wednesday, tired from work, and then my relatives start showing up, and then they start dumping their stuff on my kitchen counters and filling up my, you know, refrigerator space. You guys can give me a wave if this is you, too. I had to show, tell you a really funny story about one year. My mother-in-law, we're still friends to this day. We both love each other, but I thought I was going to kill her. I got home Wednesday night, and that was the thing. I was like, you do your thing, and then we'll clean up the kitchen, and that way Thursday morning when I have to do the bird and all the main things, the kitchen's ready for me. Well, I get home Wednesday night, and she had completely clogged my kitchen sink. So she put... um butternut squash peels, apple peels, and potato peels all down the garbage disposal at the same time and tried to run it. And it just totally got backed up. And then the sink was full of water plus all these floating peels in there. And then they didn't know what to do or how to fix it. So she left it. And so I got home and Scott was still at work. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I thought I was just going to get started on everything that I had planned to do. And instead I had to like YouTube how to find this tool to like unclog the garbage disposal. And I called my neighbor at the time and I was like, do you know anything about how to do this? So he's like on his back under my sink trying to unclog it. So anyway, you don't want all those last second surprises. So if you can prep on your normal prep and get some of the stuff done ahead, anything like, you know, some of your pies, potatoes, you can peel away in advance, things you can make and refrigerate and then in, in, in advance, do that. Uh, you can either buy containers or tell your guests to bring containers so that you can send leftovers with them. That also helps so that like, if it's just sticking to the 90-10, it's just one meal of special treats that you wouldn't normally eat and then you don't feel obligated to not be wasteful and eat all the rest of the leftovers yourself after all your company leaves you can just send some of it off like portion it out to everybody and then we said make new traditions so <laughs> your children only know what you put in front of them is what we like to say and so you know, we have tricked, so to speak, we're not trying to trick anybody, but sometimes you tell your guests after the fact, did you know you just ate a gluten-free, like sugar-free pie and you were licking your chops and loved every ounce of it? It can be fun to teach people that the holidays can still be enjoyable, the food can still be delicious, you can still be satisfied and have a full belly and make some of these new things. And so don't be don't be um, intimidated to be the, you know, change maker. So then going into healthy swaps. So on the left are some of the traditional things that people, you know, use in order to make the Thanksgiving dinner. And on the right would be healthier swaps. So instead of Cool Whip, which has a lot of sugar, high fructose corn syrup and weird oils like seed oils in them, you can make your own whipped cream. It's just heavy cream or a can of the full fat coconut cream that's usually in the like Asian or Thai aisle in your normal grocery store. You can use a high speed um, hand mixer and whip that into whipped cream. And there's a web, um, there's a recipe for that on our website. It's super easy. And I know as a kid, like this is where you can get the kids involved. Because if the kids get involved in making healthy food, like they're all in. Um, I used to love and request to be the person who made the whipped cream at my grandma's house every single year. And I still really love it because it goes from liquid to turning into like fluffy peaks. Kids, it's like a chemistry experiment. They just love it. Um, one of our favorite swaps is instead of mashed potatoes to do mashed cauliflower or turnips, then you can do it the same exact way. 
Um, if you're like laughing right now and shaking your head like that would never fly, maybe you would do half potato and half cauliflower or half potato and half turnips, right? Like maybe you can just slide it in a little bit so it's less overall uh, carb load and less glycemic index. So that's why we're trying, when I show you the carb counts in a little bit, you'll understand why we're trying to go after some of these higher carby things. But really, like the potatoes are just the carrier for the butter and the cream and the gravy. Like, so if you pour that same deliciousness over mashed cauliflower or turnips, a lot of times people won't know. But you could do half and half, or you could just, you know, slowly gradiently switch over to the cauliflower or turnips. Um, so baked goods obviously are a big thing at Thanksgiving, whether it's breads or pastries or pies. So you can um do a google search on your favorite recipe for example pumpkin pie and you could put gluten free in front of it or you could do a google search and instead of you know like pumpkin bread you could say keto keto so if you use the keywords keto paleo or gluten free you'll get a healthier version of the same recipe okay so that'll give you an idea of ratios of wet and dry ingredients also, because you can't just, you cannot just take a normal baking recipe and implement coconut or almond flour. It can't, be, it won't ever be a one-to-one -one ratio because the alternate coconut and almond flours, they absorb a lot more of the liquid than traditional baking flour does. And that's why they get really heavy and like um, more dense. So you won't like the consistency if you're looking for like, you know, your normal pastries and pie crusts and breads. So you, if you look up these recipes, it'll give you an idea of the ratio. But using almond and coconut flour are better versions. There are gluten-free all-purpose baking flours, but a lot of those are made out of rice flour and potato starch. And so they have a very high glycemic index where if you use the almond and coconut flour, it's less carbs and more protein. So that's why we recommend those two flours. But usually when you're doing gluten-free baking, you usually have to use a combination of multiple types of flour in order to get a similar consistency. So I have wasted a lot of 12 and $15 bags of almond and coconut flour not realizing that baking is more of a chemistry experiment and has to be very precise. That's why personally I don't like baking. I like cooking because you can add sauces and seasonings and taste it as you go. You cannot do that with baking. So you have to be more precise. Um, the next one is obviously sugar is in a lot of traditional recipes. So some sweet natural sweeteners that we like instead are stevia, uh, maple syrup, dates you know they're very sweet and can be used in a lot of recipes uh coconut palm sugar uh there's some recipes where you don't even need flour because the coconut palm sugar is so high and rich in fiber that it can be serve as both your flour and your sweetener there's actually a five ingredient chocolate chip recipe on our website using coconut palm sugar in exactly that way um, and another natural natural sweetener that we like is monk fruit. There's a lot of keto, like you'll see it on the label, keto recipes um, or snacks, treats, box goods, for example, like already like store made stuff. Just really deter you from using some of those keto recipes. A lot of them have sucralose and other sugar alcohols in them. They're not the best for you. They're very inflammatory and they can cause a lot of um, GI, like gut distress. So beware of the keto friendly sweeteners. Um, these are not all keto friendly. Monk fruit and stevia are, but the maple syrup, dates, and coconut palm sugar are considered paleo, but they still raise your blood sugar. Okay. Um, breads and rolls, like obviously people are going to have that bread basket. Um, there's an awesome recipe on our website for keto biscuits. It's so easy to make. They're delicious. 
They actually remind me of the um, cheesy biscuit recipe that Red Lobster serves. I don't know if they still serve it. I haven't been there in a really long time, but I am a fan of biscuits. That's my... <laughs> That's my confession, but you can make your own keto biscuits. And I in your I bet people will grab those over the normal bread. They're so yummy. Um, beware of gravy. If you are a gluten-free person, gravy is a thing that like gluten can be hiding in because usually to thicken it, they use all-purpose wheat flour. You can make your own gravy really quickly and really easily just using the drippings from the turkey. Um, you can use one of these alternate flowers that we were talking about and you just, you know, use like a, make a roux with the flour and butter and then slowly add the drippings in and some seasoning. And it's pretty easy to do. You just have to do it slow and on low heat and give it a little patience and keep stirring. But kids love that too. That was my other job as a kid. I always wanted to whip up the whipped cream and I wanted to be there stirring the gravy. Um, so that's good. Uh, stuffing is another bread bomb that's really not necessary. I know some people are like, oh, the we put it in the turkey for flavor. Well, all that, the bread part of the stuffing isn't what gives the turkey flavor. It's the celery and the onions. You can put an apple inside of the turkey. You could rub the inside of the turkey with like an herb butter just to infuse it with some of those flavors. So there's definitely other ways to make your turkey flavorful. And there's also other ways to make stuffing. So there's some really good, uh, if you look up paleo or keto stuffing recipes, and I think there is one on our website. Usually they're made with quinoa base, um, a lot of nuts and seeds, um, cut like finely cut mushrooms. Sometimes they have, um, what are those little white things, chestnuts in them or water chestnuts in them for some crunch. So there's definitely recipes out there that are yummy if you feel like you need something to go with it or your company wants it, or you just wanna explore something different. Um, <laughs> there was, this is really kind of funny because I was listening to a couple of pretty famous like influencers in the field of nutrition and I thought they were make. I thought it was like a spoof. I thought they were just making fun at the pumpkin spice cream thing, and I and then I realized they were serious. But they were going off about like, did you know that there's real? There's no pumpkin in pumpkin spice. And then the guy was like, I know, like I had no idea. And then they started going through like Starbucks and Dunkin' Donuts and all these places showing that there was no pumpkin. And I was like, did they really think they were gonna find pumpkin in there? Like that's silly. <laughs> But instead of using the pumpkin spice creamer, I love changing the flavor of my coffee or tea with the seasons. I like pumpkin spice myself, but a lot of those things are just filled with like bad oils, bad sweeteners. They're just super highly processed. Some of them have like caramel coloring in it, which is a known carcinogen. So you can still enjoy the pumpkin spice, but actually use the pumpkin spice, like the powdered spice that you would put in pumpkin pie. Um, and then you can use heavy cream. I'm seeing all my typos on there. I'm gonna go back and correct these slides after tonight. Um, heavy cream, butter, or MCT oil. So there's like um, bullet coffee, but you can add like flavor and stuff. And then Sweet Drops is a brand of liquid stevia that we like. And they have it in caramel, they have it in vanilla, they have chocolate, they have coconut. But this time of year, I like to get the caramel one and put some of the pumpkin spice, um, actual spice with heavy cream or MCT oil. Then use one of those like frothers and you can make your own lattes and it's healthy for you. And honestly, they taste better than the, than the um, store-bought ones anyway. So those are some of my favorite um, seasonal healthy swaps. Your health and how you feel on a daily basis directly impact your mental, emotional, and spiritual health. We will help you reprogram your way of thinking and be on a plan that works for your body instead of against it. It is time to rewrite the false belief that health abnormalities are normal and that it just is what it is. You do not have to live with feeling less than 100%. 
we invite you to take a serious look at how you feel on a day-to-day -day basis. Is what you're doing working? Do you want to learn how to live a more holistic life that's still enjoyable and fun? The 90-10 lifestyle can be the bridge from subpar results to the vibrant and abundant lifestyle that you've been looking for. So click the link by this video so you can get started today. We truly, truly know that this program can change your life. We'll see you on the inside. Okay, uncomfortable conversations. Do you guys, anybody have these? Am I the only one that has uncomfortable? <laughs> I always like, I say, I think God put me on the planet to be the big old weirdo and be totally comfortable with it, but let's go over it. So you don't have to ruffle any feathers. You don't have to be the only weirdo at your, ta at your table either. So no bread or pie, thanks. People will look at you, right? Like, what are you crazy? Like, that's what Thanksgiving is all about. And so what I find that makes it helpful is if you relate your nutritional needs back to like a medical condition, because people tend to take it more seriously or be like, oh, I had no idea that you couldn't have that. And then they want to kind of help you or work along with you. Um, and so you don't have to say you have, you don't have to lie. You don't have to over exaggerate the condition, but you know, if you just let them know like, Hey, I'm working with a nutritionist or I'm on a specific nutrition program and these things aren't on my program at the moment, or, you know, I just find that I, my state, your condition, depending on how, you know, how comfortable you are with said company at your table, depending on who's around, you know, I just feel like I feel overall better by, you know, not having these foods they are not on my nutrition program. And so, uh, you know, you have it, I'm fine with it. Like, you're not going to hurt my feelings if you have it. So that's one way to handle it. Um, but also if you go in knowing this, so there's like this old adage, like psychologically and even in business and sales, the, <laughs> the worst thing for people is to be made felt wrong. And so people will get super defensive even if you're doing something right. So for example, if you're the only person that's on a low carb diet, even though you're doing it for good reasons for your own health, you would think the people that love you and are around you would be in support of you doing healthy things. But sometimes in order for them to feel right, they have to make you wrong because they're not willing to go on a low carb diet or, you know, figure out how to live that way, or they think it's too hard, or you know, they just don't have the guidance or knowledge, or they're not ready to do something like that yet. And so if you know that, it will help you understand why they're reacting as strongly as sometimes they are. And maybe you have a super loving family that isn't going to do this to you, but maybe you're having dinner with people you're not that comfortable with, or it's your first time, you know, you're in a new relationship and you're sitting down with family for the first time, you know, maybe you're just meeting people. Maybe it's a business situation and you don't know everybody around the table and people are just getting in your business for no reason. And they really don't have any business doing that. So if you can make other people right, somehow find a way to make them right for what they're doing. Um, if that makes sense, right. Um, I told you about the medical needs. So if you, and this goes for restaurants too. So maybe you're not sitting around a Thanksgiving table and you're going to eat out. Um, people have to take it seriously if you have an actual food sensitivity or a chemical sensitivity. because That's a medical situation. And again, like you don't have to over exaggerate it or anything, but it's less offensive or judgmental to them. And I just always say, blame me, be like, Dr. Christie, you know, said I can't have this. And so I'm going to stick to that, even if it is a holiday, you can make me the, you can make me the weirdo. I don't care. It doesn't hurt my feelings. But then I got a more positive thing. Think about it going in. If you're anticipating a conversation like this, or you don't really know how it's going to go over, or maybe you're going to a dinner table where you have already tried because you want to help other people and you've poured into this is also like my other side of the family where we have people that have 
you know, the overweight, diabetes, heart disease, and we have tried and tried and poured into them in a positive and loving way, you know, to encourage them to go lower carb and gluten free and stop eating the cool whip and the things that are inflammatory and contributing to their health issues. And they just are like, no, thanks. And we don't understand because we think it's better to figure out how to live healthy and make some easy adjust, easy and doable adjustments and forego unnecessary, you know, procedures and medications and, you know, move our health in a positive direction. And for whatever reason, like certain family members are like, no, thanks. That's not for me. And so we just go into that knowing that so that we're not upset by it. And we are like, okay, we're just, that's how it's going to be. No problem. You do you, I'll do me. But also if you think of it as a testimonial, right? Like you could be a walking billboard and testimony for somebody to encourage them that like, hey, I never thought I could do this. Or I once thought what, what you thought, I didn't want to do this. But when I did, what I noticed was whatever. And some of you guys also have physical obvious changes. And even if you don't talk about it or bring it up, they're going to be like, wow, your eyes look clearer. You have so much energy. Your skin is glowing. Maybe they see a transformation in your physical appearance, like your waistline and all. So, you know, you can find a loving way to just brag on what you've been doing and how great you feel. And to their interest level, they'll let them ask and you can answer as appropriate. But you could become the motivation for the people that you love to learn how to make healthy choices for themselves. And maybe they don't do it today or tomorrow. Or maybe they still eat all the junk right in front of your eyes. That's okay. They're not ready. But you're just dripping on them. And not everybody's going to take advice and information and act on it for the very first time. And you guys even think about your own, like, how did you have, how did you come to help by design in the first place? Did you call up the very first time somebody talked about health by design or muscle testing or their weird doctor? Probably not. It probably took a little more encouraging than just one conversation. And so don't get frustrated with the people that you love. Obviously, we all, once you know what could be, you want that for everyone, but they might just not be ready. And so you're just dripping on them and they might have to hear it seven more times from seven more sources before they're like, finally, like, fine, I'll pick up the call. What is this thing all about? Okay, I want to give it a try. But you don't have to be attached to the outcome. You know, you're just introducing them to some new information and maybe it's the first time for them too. Okay, carb counts. Here we go. <laughs> so this is fun. I couldn't figure out how to do this as a quiz. So all the answers are right in front of you. But turkey is a good source of protein. There are zero grams of carbs in turkey, depending on what you do to it. <laughs> so if you glaze it in maple syrup, then you add it, you're adding carbs. If you stuff it with some of these other items like traditional stuffing, then you add carbs. If you pour gluten-based wheat gravy over it, then you add carbs. But the turkey itself has zero carbs. So fill up on that first. Make that the biggest portion on your plate and then just have samplings of the other if you're going to have them at all. Green bean casserole is pretty low um, and there's some healthier ways to make it some swaps instead of like the Campbell's um, mushroom, uh, cream of mushroom soup. There's Pacific's brand has um, a gluten-free organic version of cream of mushroom soup. Traditional stuffing has, these are normal serving sizes also. So when they talk about like a serving size, usually it's like a cup or less. And how many people like put up only one cup of stuffing on their plate? It's usually like a big old mound. And then, you know, you make the gravy indent, you make the little like pool, <laughs> you smash it to put the gravy, make the gravy um, lake inside of it. Um, mashed potatoes, potatoes are very high in carbs. So the first time I ever started playing around with macro um, counting, I quickly realized that like one serving of, of potatoes is if you were on keto, which you don't have to be, is almost your carb for the entire day. So that means like no fruit or, you know, nuts or seeds or anything else to, in that same day. So you can forego a lot of this by, you know, 
doing the mashed cauliflower or turnips or something a little lower glycemic, or just make it a small portion on your plate. Gravy is relatively low um, in carbs, so that's always a good, good thing. Uh, cranberry sauce, this is the canned nasty version. There is a beautiful recipe for cranberry sauce. It's super easy to make, very, very fun for kids to get involved in and make that is better than this. But the traditional gross one that stays in the shape of the can, including like the ridges in it, is 22 grams per slice. And it also has all sorts of artificial stuff in it. But cranberries are really fun if you've never made it. If you just boil them with water over the stove, it's so fun because it goes from, you know, hard cranberries to like all of a sudden they start popping and they make their own like gelatin thing. And before you know it, you have like what you think of as cranberry sauce. And so that's kind of a fun chemistry experiment one for the kids to sit there and stir it and wait for it to turn. And then you could just sweeten it with a little bit of honey or some orange juice. Um, cinnamon, nutmeg, all that kind of goodies. So that's on our website as well. I know for some com for some families, cornbread or cornbread casserole, if you're in the South, which we are, is super high in carbs. So you could forego that and do those keto biscuits that I was talking about. Okay, where are my sweet potato casserole people? I used to love this as a kid and my grandma did it real. Like she... I think there was the sweet potatoes and maple syrup and orange juice and marshmallows, I think, and God knows, oh, and brown sugar on top. And I mean, it that is, there's more carbs in sweet potato casserole, even than pecan pie, which is like one of the sweetest pies I've ever had. So <laughs> you can have sweet potatoes or mashed sweet potatoes and just do grass fed butter and some cinnamon and not do the whole rest of it. And it's still a sweet treat. Um, if you drink wine, white wine is five grams of glass. Pecan pie is higher in carbs than pumpkin pie. There, we don't have, I have not been able to do pecan pie in a healthy, low carb way. So that's not on our website. There's actually a couple of different recipes for pumpkin pie. There's a sugar free, uh, there's a sugar free one, and then there's a gluten free, dairy free one as well. So, and they're delicious, and nobody knows the difference. So, you guys can go on our website and look for those yummies. So the total of all that, if you added it up, is over three, where was that? Yeah, 392 grams of carbs. And remember I told you earlier, 3,000 calories just in one meal, one Thanksgiving meal. So for a 200 pound male, that would be enough carbs for four and a half days. <laughs> so it's super funny to me that everybody's like, oh, tryptophan and the turkey, it makes everybody fall asleep and super tired. I'm like, no, it, I mean, yes, a little bit, but I think they're in a carb coma more than a tryptophan coma, like silly. <laughs> That's a lot of carbs. Okay. And so for healthy recipes, if you just go to our website, www.healthbydesignfl.com forward slash recipes, they're all there for you. Um, so this is the cranberry sauce that I talked to you about. And so don't hold me to this, but I am going to make you guys a Thanksgiving cookbook recipe flip book, like a digital one. And I'm going to send it out to you hopefully over the weekend before you do your Sunday meal prep so that you can take a look. Um, but they are all on there. So if you're a planner and waiting for my flip book, it's going to take too long. I sent one out last year. It was a super positive thing. People loved it. But the link, it has expired and I have to make it over again, which I'm a little sad about because it came out ahead really, really good. But the source of those recipes were all right here on the website. So if you want to jump ahead, you can, but I'm going to do my best to send you a, a, a holiday recipe book. And so in spirit of thanks, I just want to thank all of you for being patients, for being followers, for joining us tonight. Um, without you, I wouldn't be able to serve my purpose every single day. Obviously, I love what I do. I'm super passionate about it. And so I just thank you for making it possible, for supporting us, for referring your friends and family. It means the world to us. And it's an honor that I don't take lightly, but you keep me inspired. You know, you keep me wanting to create content and keep researching and adding different 
services to our practice and doing events like the health fair and this, it's just super fun for us. And um, your testimonies are more than enough pay and reward for what we do and all the hard work. So I just want to thank you. And if you want to follow up, if you have any additional questions about anything that we went over tonight, um, we have an info at Health by Design um, line, email line. You can call our normal phone number, of course. And there is also a chat box right on our Health by Design website. You guys have us. We're on Facebook. We're on YouTube. We're on all the podcast channels. Um, so you can find us pretty much everywhere. We make it. It's important to us to be, you know, accessible and to keep putting information out there. And also, if you have ideas about topics that you want us to cover in the coming months, in the coming year, please let us know. Um, we definitely take your advice. We cover all of the things that we've covered are based on questions that are regularly asked of us. And so we want to hear from you. If there's topics that you'd like us to cover, I know, please message us and send it in. And um, if you like this, um, comment in the box. And um, thanks, guys. I hope you have an awesome Thanksgiving. I hope you keep it healthy. I hope we don't have a lot of cleanup to do on New Year's after all these holiday fun. And um, stay safe. And we'll see you back in the office at uh, the end of November. Good night, everybody. Thanks for listening to another episode of the Weird Works podcast. Until next time, I'm Dr. Christie signing off in good health naturally.